morning everyone <coughs> the topic of my presentation today is paraquat poisoning uh, paraquat has the chemical <coughs> formula of 11 dimethyl 44 bipyridinum trichloride it is a rapidly acting non selective herbicide which is being used since the 1960s and it is relatively inexpensive since it's uh, relatively expen inexpensive and it uh, and it's widely available then uh, this contributes to its widespread use in much of the developing world uh, it is a fast acting contact weed killer, uh, it is de deactivated in contact with soil. However, ingestion of paraquat is extremely toxic to humans with no specific antidote or effective treatment. Paraquat involves many organ systems, mainly the lung, kidney, liver leading to multi-organ failure and death. In India, it is available as paraquat di dichloride. Now the mechanism of paraquat toxicity, <coughs> the kinetics, the oral ingestion of paraquat is the most common route of toxicity. It can be absorbed through the skin, especially if the skin is damaged, um, mucous membranes, eyes or via the inhalational route, but symptoms are often delayed. Localized skin damage or dermatitis, eye injury and nosebleed occur frequently among paraquat users. The median lethal dose of paraquat is 3 to 5 grams. Swallowing 20 to 30 ml of 20 percent paraquat is usually lethal, uh, but even 10 ml can cause significant illness. Once ingested, less than 5 percent is absorbed through the GI tract. Recent food in ingestion delays the absorption of the toxin. Peak plasma and lung concentration are reached within 1 to 2 hours and 5 to 7, seven hours respectively after ingestion. The volume of distribution is approximately 2.7 liter per kg and it follows a multi-compartment distribution model which we will discuss later. 90 percent of the paraquat is excreted through the kidneys in 20, 12 to 24 hours. Half-life is 12 hours with normal renal function, however it increases up to 120 hours as renal failure sets in. The plasma paraquat concentrations can well be described by a two-compartment model with time dependent elimination from the central compartment. Bioavailability increases substantially with increasing doses due to gut and liver toxicity. After a few years, the renal clearance declines rapidly in severe poisoning. Thus, small proportion of the paraquat that distributes into the deeper compartments is slowly eliminated by kidneys over many days to weeks. The initial elimination half-life is around four, 6 hours, but this is around 4 days after the first day. Paraquat is ap actively taken up against a marked concentration gradient into the type 2 pneumocytes which could be considered as a third, tox third toxic effect compartment. Elimination from this uh, compartment is even slow slower than the other compartments. Now the mechanism of critical toxicity. Paraquat con concentration in the lung increases continuously after a few hours of its ingestion. It keeps on increasing despite there being fall in the plasma concentration of paraquat. It may be attributed to the endogenous polyamine transport system in the type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells where it undergoes redox cycling and generates reactive, reactive oxygen species. These reactive oxygen species are one of the several pathways through which paraquat toxicity occurs. Paraquat is reduced to monocation radical uh, in the reaction dependent on NADH, NADPH cytochrome P450 reductase and xanthine oxidase. The monocation radical initiates the injury to the pneumocytes. The uh, spontaneous reaction of the monocation radical with the molecular oxygen yields the superoxide radical and reversibly forms the dication radical. The peroxynitrite is a strong oxidant which is formed after the uh, superoxide radical combines with the nitric oxide. These highly reactive oxygen species which are derived from various pathways leads to toxic insult to most of the organs. Reactive oxygen species initiate an inflammatory process in organs including lungs. It initiates inflammatory cell infiltration. Uh, paraquat also leads to mitochondrial damage probably due to an increase in membrane permeability that in, uh, leads to mitochondrial swelling. It also it leads to increase in free iron from ferritin. These pathophysiological pathways trigger the use of antioxidants and desperoxamine in the management of paraquat toxicity. This is a flowchart showing the uh, pathway of uh, damage. The reactive oxygen species stimulate the uh, protein complex P13K NF uh, kappa beta uh, activator protein 1, uh, which control the uh, DNS transcription 
to stimulate uh, alt uh, inflammation cell growth proliferation differentiation and ap uh, apoptosis by altering the cellular function. Pathologic processes in major target organs. The previously mentioned uh, mechanisms are not exclusive, all may occur and are very likely to be synergistic. The multiplicity of pathways may be the underlying explanation for the observation that no agent aimed at any particular mechanism has been shown to alter the toxicity substantially when given after the poisoning. Indeed, the most mostly wide use treatments are aimed at much more non-specific secondary pathological uh, processes such as inflammation. Paracord toxicity is most severe in the lungs. The inflammatory process and cellular damage however involve other organs too. In lungs, it leads to apoptosis of affected cells in a process that is initiated with diffuse alveolitis. Initial pulmonary edema leads to proliferative stage followed by the lung fibrosis. Apart from lungs, the reactive oxygen species also, also affects the proximal convoluted tubules of the kidney uh, leading to, uh, uh, kidneys uh, leading to necrosis. Hepatocytes injury leads to liver damage associated with damage to mitochondria and the endoplasmic reticulum. The clinical manifestations. Acute paracoid in intoxication is asymptomatic, usually asymptomatic in the early stage. Patients may present with irritation and numbness of the tongue and oral mucosa. Patients may also develop ulcerative lesions over the tongue that may have occasional bleeding known as the paracoid tongue. Severity and extent of the oral and tongue lesions are not of any prognostic value as they appear in patients who spit paracoid out without uh, swallowing. GI tract toxicity is universal loose connection loose connection GI tract toxicity is universal after ingestion. Like corrosives, paracoid ingestion leads to uh, mucosal lesion in the pharynx and esophagus and it may lead to mediastinitis, medio pneumomediastinum or perforation of the esophagus or stomach. The systemic manifestation of paracoid toxicity depends upon the quantity ingested, patient's age that is more than 50 years and presence of comorbidity, uh, comorbidities like kidney, uh, kidney disease. Patients who had ingested more than 50 ml of 20 percent paracoid solution may present with hypoxia and shock with multi-organ involvement. These patients have a fulminant course and death ensues in a few hours to few days. Paracoid ingestion of 10 to 50, 50 ml is referred to as moderate to severe poisoning. These patients usually show renal involvement initially over 2 to 6 days. Hypoxia starts after 3 to 7 days and worsens gradually and the patient dies of severe hypoxia due to lung fibrosis in 4 to 6 weeks. This is the image showing the paracoid tongue. The first image is the early lesion within 24 hours of ingestion and then the late lesion uh, two weeks after ingestion with extensive ulceration. Now this is a table showing the signs and symptoms of acute paracoid toxicity as per the ingested dose. If the ingested uh, amount of paracoid uh, is less than 10 ml, it is mild or uh, asymptomatic and the uh, amount is less than 20 mg per kg body weight, uh, immediately there is no symptoms of oral ulcers or there is mild symptoms. Uh, on day one, uh, after day one, there is irritation and numbness of the tongue and mouth, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain and diarrhea. Uh, in case of moderate to severe, that is 10 to 50 ml ingestion. Uh, uh, day 3, day 4, there is oliguria, dyspnea and tachypnea 
and uh, on further progression from days to weeks there is acute respiratory illness. In case of severe or acute fulminant toxicity where the ingested amount is more than 50 ml, on day 1 there is oral mucosal pain and pharyngeal pain with burns, chest pain, uh, uh, esophageal injury, agitation, confusion, burning skin sensation. Uh, on day 1 to day 3 there is decreased urine flow progressing to anuria and within 48 hours there is tachycardia, hypotension and cardiovascular collapse, pulmonary edema, respiratory distress, respiratory failure and hepatic involvement. Now investigations, the sodium di dithionate test, dithionate reduces the paraquat a blue colored substance in an alkaline medium if, if the urine paraquat levels are more than 1 milligram per liter and plasma paraquat levels are more than 2 milligram per liter. If the urine turns blue, it indicates a very poor prognosis. The principle be uh, behind the dithionate test is that absorbance of the paraquat changes as a result of blue color produced on reacting with dithionate. This chemical reaction is facilitated in an alkaline environment. Therefore, the first step of the dithionate test is addition of dithionate to fresh urine sample in a colorless container followed by alkalination with a weak alkalizing agent such as sodium bicarbonate. Uh, Yes sir, in a colorless container we take the fresh urine sample, uh, uh, in a, uh, uh, we add dithionate then alkalination by a weak agent like sodium bicarbonate. If the color turns blue then uh, uh, the urine paraquat levels is more than 1 and it indicates a poor prognosis. A Foley's catheter should be placed and the bladder should be fully emptied in immediate arrival of the paraquat intoxicated patient at the emergency room. The urine sample represents the urine production over several hours. Dithionate urine test results from first sample uh, which represent the average blood paraquat levels during the previous several hours. A second urine sample is corrected after the first urine collection. The result of the dithionate test from the second urine sample re represents the current blood paraquat level. An observation of higher levels in the first urine sample than the second urine samples can be interpreted as decreasing serum paraquat levels uh, from uh, prior to hospitalization. Sequential dithionate tests are conducted every 3 to 4 hours after the second dithionate urine test until the results are negative. Uh, the time to achieve a negative dithionate test is a reliable marker for predicting mortality. It has been shown that uh, if the uh, to to total amount of paraquat uh, seen by the dithionate test is more than 34, then the chance of mortality is almost 85 to 100 percent. Now other investigations, the arterial blood gas analysis. Tachypnea with low PaCO2 indicates the progression of hypoxia. PaO2 decreases progressively as the paraquat induced lung injury proceeds. Notably, in cases of PaO2 less than 60 mmHg, there is a significant rise in mortality. Routine blood uh, tests such as uh, LFT and uh, KFT including serum electrolytes should be done on admission on regular basis to guide the supportive treatment which has been discussed later. And we may also do serum amylase lipase if we sub, uh, suspect acute pancreatitis. Now imaging. A simple chest radiograph has poor sensitivity and specificity for evalu evaluating paraquat induced lung injury. HRCT thorax is the best modality in uh, fully evaluating the extent of acute paraquat lung injury. The initial pathology of the lung is an inflammation of the alveoli that is alveolitis which presents at ground glass opacity signal on the HRCT imaging. The predilection site is the subpleural area. A ground glass opacity more than 50 percent of the total lung volume is usually fatal. But all surviving patients have a ground glass opacity less than 20 percent of the total lung volume on HRCT imaging at uh, 7 days post paraquat ingestion. When a healthy patient hesitantly ingests a large amount of undiluted paraquat that is more than 100 ml of uh, 20 percent paraquat with multiple sips, there is a high chance of developing esophageal rupture and pneumomediastinum with fatal consequences. The ground glass opacity lesion progressed to fibrosis after 2 to 3 weeks. Uh, uh, fibrosis is a progressive process which is usually stopped within one month. Chest radiograph should be performed if pneumomediastinum or pneumothorax is suspected. CT scan of the chest uh, is uh, useful in detecting early lung fibrosis or assessing long term damage in survivors. This is a uh, chest radiograph demonstrating the diffuse alveolar shadowing of a patient uh, 7 days after the ingestion of paraquat and subsequently this is the HRCT of chest uh, demonstrating bilateral pulmonary fibrosis uh, 11 days after paraquat poisoning. 
the sequential measures of the HRCT lung, a 43 year old woman intentionally ingested paraquat in suicide attempt. She presented the hospital within 3 hours of uh, ingestion. Serum paraquat level was 2.63 microgram per milliliter. The uh, lung the area of the lung lesion was not ex ex expanded on the sequential HRCT. The uh, overall the process of lung fibrosis completes within one month. Management. The paraquat toxicity has no set protocols or guidelines for management. The in absence of an antidote, the mainly management is supportive care. Airway breathing, circulation are assessed and general resuscitation is done as routine protocol. Patients presenting early may be asymptomatic. Delayed presentations are common and patients may be tachypneic secondary to metabolic acidosis or pulmonary complications. Hypoxia needs to be treated only if oxygen saturation is less than 90 percent as it will worsen the oxidative stress. Fluid resuscitation is to be done if signs of hypovolemia are present. Gastrointestinal decontamination, paraquat is a corrosive poison so gastric lavage is a relative contraindication. However, a nasogastric tube should be inserted in case of uh, 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 patient presenting early within 2 to 4 hours of in, uh, uh, ingestion since with later progression there will be more uh, uh, ulcerations of the mouth and the esophag esophagus so it will be difficult to uh, introduce the naso nasogastric tube. This tube can be used to administer uh, Fuller's earth or Multani Mitti uh, which is also known as activated charcoal 1 to 2 gram per kg. Later on this tube can be used for enteral feeding. Extracorporeal elimination. The peak time of plasma paraquat is 1 to 3 hours post ingestion and that of the lung cells is 4 to 5 hours and nearly 90 percent of the paraquat disappears in the plasma 5 to 6 hours after ingestion. Ideally hemoperfusion and renal replacement therapy should be started as early as possible within 2 to 4 hours of ingestion but should be used within 6 hours after that the evidence is very much limited. Hemoperfusion results in a more rapid reduction of paraquat plasma levels than hemodialysis and early elicitation can be predictive of uh, survival. Continuous venovenous hemofiltration may improve the survival, reduce organ dysfunction and prolong the survival rate for patients to addi receive additional treatments. This uh, effect of hemoperfusion in paraquat toxicity is time limited as the kidney starts clearing the toxin in initial 6 to 12 hours, so plasma levels will be lower. Moreover, this elimination from hemoperfusion will not protect the impact of the toxin on the lung. As per small observational studies, there is small mortality benefit of adding continuous venovenous hemofiltration, but long term outcome and mortality did not improve. At best, the CVVH may give time for novel therapies like ECMO along with lung transplant by preventing early death. In patients who are presenting early, hemoperfusion with monitoring of urine uh, paraquat concentration can reduce the early mortality. Urine uh, paraquat needs to be monitored after each hemoperfusion session and this to be continued until urine paraquat concentration is negative. Urine paraquat measurements is repeated again after 24 hours. If negative till 48 hours, then may plan to stop the hemoperfusion. There are few observational studies to suggest mortality benefits of CVVH2 along with hemoperfusion, but long term survival there is no improvement. Now immunosuppressant therapy and antioxidant. The paraquats initiates the inflammatory response to reactive oxygen species as described earlier. The immunosuppressants and antioxidants may intervene this part of the cascade and prevent further organ damage. For severe poisoning, uh, patients receiving both uh, glucocorticoids methylprednisolone 1 gram for 3 days and cyclophosphamide 1 gram for 2 days may have lower death rate, but this is not proven. Cyclophosphamide should be added along with steroids for the first 2 days. Antioxidants such as vitamin E, C, N-acetylcysteine, desperoxamine, salicylates act as free radical scavengers. Vitamin E and salicylates also in inhibits NF-kappa beta activation and thus transcription of pro-inflammatory mediators. High dose long term antioxidants could potentially be a, a critical component improving the survival rate in severe paraquat poisoning. Limiting the oxygen therapy for patients with a PO2 more than 50 mmHg can prevent the free radical formation. Mechanical ventilation. Mechanical ventilation has a role of respiratory support. Patients requiring mechanical ventilation usually have a poor prognosis. Early mechanical ventilation 
may further worsen the fibrosis. Uncontrolled hypoxia may have no effect on uh, worsening in worsening paracord induced uh, pulmonary injury and oxygen supplementation may further worsen the lung injury. Non-invasive or invasive ventilation may be used as a bridge to extracorporeal therapies and lung transplant later. ECMO. ECMO can be used in early or late stages. In early stages, it is mainly used for bo both cardiac and respiratory support that is VA ECMO. In late stages, it is mainly for respiratory support with bridge to transplant plan. On ECMO, on ECMO mainly those patients survive who need ECMO in the late stages. Patients needing ECMO in the early stage that is less than a week are unlikely to survive. Now, uh, during the process of management, these are the clinical monitoring we should be done, we should do. First is for acute renal failure. Daily fluid balance should be maintained with the aim of ensuring good urine output without overloading the patient. Uh, clinical examination usually detect jaundice uh, and right hypochondrial pain which are uh, symptoms suggestive of liver toxicity. Respiratory rate auscultation of the chest for uh, crepitations and measurement of peripheral oxygen saturation should be performed on at least twice daily basis. However, uh, uh, oxygen uh, supplementary oxygen should not be given ex except as a palliative measure in patients determined to be in terminal decline. And also the mucosal injury. Patient develop several oral ulcers within a few days after ingestion of paracord. This generally prevents pa patients from taking adequate food or oral fluids up to 10 days. Early insertion of the nasogastric feeding tube will ensure adequate nutrition. This in turn may be important in ens ensuring innate antioxidant mechanisms are not compromised. In addition, pain relief with opiates can also be given. This is a table showing the uh, summary of the various uh, treatment recommendation. Decontamination if uh, within 2 to 4 hours, activated charcoal use, nasogastric tube, uh, 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 indication pharyngeal or esophageal burns or paracoid in urine. It is prophylactically inserted as early as possible as swallowing before becomes difficult later. Urine dithionate tests all patients to be done after paracord ingestion. If negative, it is repeated within 24 hours. It indicates the uh, prognos uh, prognosis. Survival expected uh, uh, if negative test to be confirmed with plasma paracord. Plasma paracord level also indicate the prognosis. The routine uh, investigations uh, should be done at least daily and when clinically uh, indicated, we look for reversible causes. Progressive changes in indicate the uh, pr uh, um, uh, prognosis. Fluid balance should be done in all, uh, all patients. Declining, if there is declining urine output, the fluid balance should be corrected and screened for acute renal failure. <coughs> um, it has been said that the, if the serum creatinine level increase uh, in 5 hours is less than 0 0.03 mg per dl, then it indicates a better prognosis. However, if the serum creatinine level in uh, 5 hours, it, if it is more than 0.5, then it indicates poor prognosis. Um, hemoperfusion or hemodialysis, if the presentation is within 2 hours, then uh, most likely it is done in early cases, future or severe uh, uh, cases with late poisoning, it is poor prognosis. Uh, in all patients, uh, we should be uh, uh, trying to avoid oxygen. We look for treatable causes such as infection or pneumothorax. Our acute pneumonitis and uh, late fibrosis indicate very poor prognosis. Cardiovascular status, uh, if the hypotension is uh, non-responsive to fluid, uh, uh, it indicates a poor prognosis. If there is uh, CNS toxicity, uh, secondary to hypoxia or acidosis, poor prognosis. For pain relief, we use sedation with opiates and benzodiazepines. Uh, uh, intubation and ventilation, uh, uh, it is avoided in acute uh, pneumonitis due to large ingestion and lung fibrosis. And uh, 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 there is no evidence from human clinical trials for use of dexamethasone sal salicylates and N-acetylcysteine. Now the conclusion, pesticide poisoning is still a common method of suicide in India. In absence of definitive treatment and high fatality with paracoid ingestion, it is important to have stringent legislative measures on its uses. Early use of hemoperfusion and renal replacement therapy may limit its toxicity. Immunosuppressants and antioxidants may have some role in preventing further injury. As very little human data is available, further studies are needed to guide the timing, choices, uh, duration and combination of these drugs. Thank you. This is a VD site rather than a pesticide. Go to the echo page. So late stage is mainly for respiratory support. So another either VB or a VA. So VB.
patients in the early stage are unlikely to survive. Is there any supportive evidence? Because all trials which have been done on ECMO are for promoting early ECMO and survival benefit, length of stay benefit, all with early ECMO. So this is a very con this is a revolutionary con contradictory statement. The people in early stages meaning ECMO will die and those who will because we don't give ECMO in late stages. So I think uh, should go through whatever evidence we have put in this way. Sir, the indication for the um, uh, immunosuppressants such as cyclophosphamide and um, uh, methylprednisolone that is also controversial. In the ICCM guidelines, they have said to give, but in the up to date, it has been mentioned that they have no role. I mean, there is concern about bleeds and sepsis, so it is not an established problem. You will not be criticized for not giving it. Uh, if you give it, uh, if you win, you are a hero. If you lose, then somebody says they have it and not all the time. It's one of those things that. Uh, yeah, well, I hear that. Please, Another uh, thing is, when if you are giving, then you have to initiate it early. Hmm. The recommendation for cyclophosphamide is on day two, huh. then day three. Huh. So it has two been. Otherwise, it has ISCCM, then our society guideline is tied up. The problem that I have said is that the Amadev J last case is that the Amra Aro Akta did delay correction because the LFT was altered. So, initiating a cycle of us from my should we go ahead or not? That was one thing which was there in my our mind. So, we delayed it for another day and then we thought that there is no scope of you know defensive battle. So we went ahead and we gave only one day. So, but uh, this methyl prednisolone we initiated from the first day onwards. Even that NAC also very controversial, but that also we gave a full dose. That too actually extended format, so seven day, two hour format. So, what there was, uh, there was no.
কিন্তু আমার কাছে যেটা আমি যেটার জন্য অ্যাপ্লাই করেছি না সেটা ওই এসওবি ওই মেন সেম মেশিন যে কোটা কোটা চলে যাচ্ছে
I think one of the insurance companies are now wanting it. Uh, reimbursement is not easy. That's why the company will corporate in the panel. But that is guaranteed. That is the second JCI in Kunda. Sir, party this. 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 अपना स्कैमिंग कौनसा है? नहीं ना एक फॉर्म आ चाहिए उटा टिकटिक मार्चा भी तो आ चाहिए। ना 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 � उन लोग सब्जेक्ट पे सब पे ही गए थे। हमारे सब्जेक्ट पे मेल आए नहीं, किंतु अमर मना इंस्टीट्यूशन तक जानी है चाहे बार हो तो देख आज कल मतलब है तो चले ऐसा हो चुका। हम बुझ जाते हैं। हम तो ना पता है वे। फोर्टी से क्या बोले चुके? एक हंते क्या बोले चुके? एग्जाम हमें नेक्स्ट वीक। फोर्टी से ज अर्की दाना है बल दामाद इधर इखने तो हमें नॉम सेंटर एग्जाम हो गए हैं हार कोठाव सेंटर नहीं पोती बात बुझ जाएगा है वह तो वह चोर ऐसी लो तो रोच्चे की आम बीते और इखने इधर भरोसा नहीं पोड़ी खराब है दिन है तेरे हमारे जो मेला से नहीं कारुड़ का चीज मेला से आमा के तो गोरांगो बुधवारे ड्यूटी टा कुत्ता बोल जी किंतु आमा बोल ची जे जो दी पोज़ जाम तक हम कुत्ते बार बोना इट इस पार्ट ऑफ़ दी प्राइवेटाइजेशन एंड कमर्शियलाइजेशन ऑफ़ यू कैन नॉट गेट अवे फ्रॉम इन आर सेटिंग स्कूले पढ़ा देगे ले वो ये माइंड कर चुके पढ़ा देगे ले तो आप लोग तो ट्रैवल � you are living not within your income, but uh, within the extent of your credit service order. Uh, which is why we had a country that GDP, after the project dates, and India, the credit card sale, current debt status, the other billion like the Twitter or a barcode. If you have a look at the photo, you have a subscribe crisis in 2008. Thank you, guys. See you next time.